um, you know, day-to-day -day operations or, or, you know, micromanaging type of stuff. But, you know, when to me it's a matter um, that deserves my attention or is a matter of statewide concern or I see issues that, that require my intervention, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak up, you know, and I think that's my duty to do that. So, but... I guess my, one of my big concerns is kind of the trickle down effect. Yeah. Like stuff is going to trickle down to UH yeah. Hilo and, and will benefit from that. And I, yeah. I think that, I don't think that works. Yeah. I think what works is having the support directly to UH Hilo. Yeah. You know, I really believe in shared governance, that the faculty have a role, the administration has a role, and you work together. You know, and you put the student first to provide the most affordable education, the highest quality education, and so that when we graduate a student here, like we're doing right now, that we're sending them out into the world, into the workforce, qualified, capable, and ready to meet the demands of those employers. You know, that's what I hope. And so um, uh, I think that uh, we've gotten a away from our focus of that, in some respects to me, at the system level. And I think we need to, uh, get back down to the level of uh, you know shared governance which which I know contradicts some of the system you know uh, it's a battle the last thing I would just say is that I like your idea of having representation among the faculty on the board of regents yeah but my understanding is we don't even have a board we don't have, even have a region now representing absolutely the island, east of that's been something that I've been asking for exasperated already, you know, I don't know what else is it, you know, I mean, even, even Jerry's not in his head, you know, I mean, we, uh, bless his soul, you know, Regent Mizuno resigned mid-September, um, they put out the names, people applied, 31 September, um, Regent Mizuno passed away in December, but the Regents Kennedy Advisory Commission couldn't even review the applicants, so we had the East Hawaii candidates, we had the Regents Candidate Advisory Commission had the names at the end of September, and then the two or three vacant seats um, on, that they all sat on the Regents, they, were, they had their names by the end of October, but the commission couldn't do their work because they had no quorum, because the governor hadn't even filled the seats on that commission. So I personally asked the governor in December, will you please fill the commission so that these guys that you appointed can do their work. These are public, just people that are volunteering. You know, they're not getting paid for this. And so finally he filled the commission in January and then they could review all of the applicants. And then they had to, um, there were two, they have to provide three names to the governor and they were, um, I think two names, they're a name short for East Hawaii seat. But in essence, they provided the names to the governor on about the 8th of March for East Hawaii. So four qualified individuals, great individuals, were provided to the governor to fill that seat that had been vacant since September on the 8th of March. And the governor had until 31 March to select one of the four names. And he didn't pick someone. And because the Senate has advised and consent, powers on any gubernatorial appointees because the governor missed the deadline on March 31st that region couldn't have been that seat can't be filled so now the legislature is out of session and the governor can now appoint somebody right now but that individual will be for <coughs> interim appointment until the legislature come back in session in January because we can't confirm someone during a special session, we can only confirm a judicial nominee. So what, in my opinion, um, <coughs> you have four individuals that took the step to apply. They were highly qualified, they went through the vetting process, they submitted their applications, they were interviewed, and they made it to the governor's desk. And, you know, these individuals, whoever was selected, deserved, uh, a hearing in the Senate, deserve the confirmation on the Senate floor, and deserve to be a fully seated region next to the other 15 regions to advocate for East Hawaii. Governor never picked somebody. So we have no voice for East Hawaii, which is really, really unfortunate. And uh, I can't speak for the, <coughs> the governor, but uh, 